you tonight for your precious, holy, written word. We thank you for the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit who's here to minister to our hearts, to make the word alive in us. Hallelujah. Thank you that the word is alive. It's living. It's breathing. It's sharp. Hallelujah. It divides asunder soul and spirit. And Father, we thank you that tonight it the revelation of the Holy Spirit just flows so easily to our hearts. It just flows to us like water. And we praise you and we bless you and we thank you for these wonderful truths that have changed our life. And we give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Praise God. Go with me if you would over to Mark chapter 4 and uh, I'm going to be reading in a lot of different uh, places tonight but we're going to be kind of launching out of Mark 4 uh, here in a minute but I started last Wednesday night I really just felt led by the Holy Spirit to go in a particular direction aren't you thankful for the Holy Spirit that leads us even in what we uh, minister about you know there's just there's a lot of things in the Bible there's a lot of directions you can go but the Holy Ghost knows what we need amen he gives us a right word at the right time to make you ready you know sometimes you hear a message and you think well you know that that's not for me I'm not going through any of that well you know wait a couple of days and you might find that you need that very word amen you know God makes a way of escape for us and one of the ways that he does that is through revelation of his word you know he knows he knows what's ahead he prepares you and makes you ready by the Holy Spirit and he arms you with revelation from the Word of God so that you can use it amen but I really felt led by the Holy Spirit to minister on how the enemy works. On how the enemy works. How many of you know this is a turbulent time, a difficult time? It really is. You know, the, the, the I, I don't know, there's just, there's just so many things that I see in the world that I've never seen before. You know, the devil's always been here. Darkness has always been here. I've never seen people yielding to darkness to the level that I see right now. That's just me. I've never seen people agreeing with darkness to the level that I see it right now. And so we have to be, uh, we have, we have to be mindful of the time that we're in and we have to be mindful that the devil is here in the earth he's launched a war for the whole world it's a war for the whole world it's not just for america it's not just a, a war against the church it's against the whole world but you know he has brought that closer to home he he has launched a war against the church he has launched a war against families he's launched a war against your soul and against your life but I thank God that we are not like the world. You know, the world gets hit, the world gets, uh, you know, attacks against them. But we're not like the world. We're not defenseless. Hallelujah. We've been given tools. We've been given weapons by our God. Amen. To resist and to stand against the enemy. But we can't stick our head in the sand and pretend like this is a day like any other day. Because it isn't. Amen. And so I started last week kind of talking about this, but we really need to, I believe, know what's going on. I think there's a lot of Christians that don't even know how all this works. They don't know what's coming from the kingdom of darkness. They don't know what God's doing. They don't know what to do, you know, if the enemy does come knocking at their door. And that is where the enemy is able to take advantage of people, even believers. But we're not supposed to be ignorant. 
I said, we're not supposed to be ignorant of how all of these things work. We need to know exactly who's doing what to who, where stuff is coming from, and more importantly, how to resist and stand against the enemy. We've been given the faith of God. We've been given the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We've been given the name of Jesus that has all authority and power over all the works of the enemy. Hallelujah. We talked about some of these things in that series we did on the name of Jesus. There's authority in the name of Jesus. You can get the devil off your back by using the name of Jesus against him, by using the authority of the Word of God against him. Amen. And by walking in dominion in your own being, by yielding and submitting your soul to God. And so these are things we're going to be talking about. You'll hear me say these things over and over again. But uh, I know that you're over in Mark, but let me just read to you some scriptures about the devil. The Bible gives us information <laughs> about the one who is attacking your life, attacking your family. It says in 1 Peter 5, you can write these down. Verse 8, it says, be sober. You know, that's an interesting word, be sober. Another way to say that is don't allow yourself to be overcome with things that you shouldn't be overcome with. Worry. Come on now. Worry. Um, you know, uncertainty. Those things can overwhelm you and overcome you. We've got to live soberly. Amen. It says be sober, be vigilant. Another word for vigilance is watchful. We can't be um, focused on things we shouldn't be focused on. We need to be watchful because your adversary, who? The devil. Well, is he a real person? He sure is. This secular gospel would have you to believe that it's just a force, just a figment of your imagination. No. The devil is real. He's a created being who is fallen. And he's in the earth today doing what? Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So there's an adversary on the loose. Amen. There's a devil on the loose. What do we do about that? Whom resist, we'll talk about that in this series, steadfast in the faith. You can do something about it. Hallelujah. You don't have to be devoured. You don't have to have your life fall apart. You don't have to have your family fall apart. You don't have to have your, your business fall apart. You can resist Him steadfast in the faith. And then he goes on to say this, knowing that the same afflictions, that's another word for trouble, are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. You know, we made mention of this last week. I got to be careful not to re-preach everything, but this needs to be <laughs> repeated. I think sometimes when people are under weird attacks from the enemy, Sometimes the nature of those attacks makes people feel shameful, makes people feel, you know, under guilt and, and this heaviness on them like, oh, I'm embarrassed that I had that kind of thought or I'm embarrassed that I had that kind of temptation. You need to know the truth about it. The devil's got the same bag of tricks that he uses against the whole human race. Come on. The, the things he does, he's very consistent with using the same things on everybody. And so get past that. Come on now. Walk in your righteousness. Get some boldness about you and stand against the evil one. Those things did not originate in you. They originated in the one that sent it. Amen. There's nothing wrong with you. 
See, the devil would lie to you, well, you're this and you're that. No, you're not. You're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You're a child of God, but you're here in the earth. Yeah. Where your adversary is. And he's going to try to attack you, but that doesn't say anything about who you are. It says everything about who he is. Hallelujah. So get out from under that guilt. Get out from under the shame because it causes people to back off of taking authority over him and putting him on the run. Glory to God. That is your way of escape. Is using the weapons that God gave you against him. Glory to God. Now, let me read to you another verse. Can I just read another one and then we'll get into some things. John 10, 10. Y'all are familiar with this. The thief, that's talking about who? Who's the thief? That's the devil. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So that gives you some information about why he's come to attack you. He's come to steal, kill, and destroy. That answers the why, because you have people, well, why this and why? Well, that's the why. It's the devil trying to steal, kill, and, and, and destroy your life. You know, uh, <laughs> you know sometimes Christians, they, they, they need to get their minds renewed from a lot of this... Um, uh, just religious jargon is what I call it. You know, people, well, you know, I just think everything happens for a reason. God's in control. Well, we ain't in control of that. Amen. You hearing me? He's not in control of that. He's not in control of stealing, killing, and destroying. That is all evil. And it comes from the evil one, the devil. Isn't it interesting that, that the word or the name devil is an expansion of the word evil? Why? Because everything that's evil is a work of him or an influence of him. But then on the other side of the coin, come on now, you take the name of God and you expand that, and what do you have? Good. Why? Because God is good. Everything He does is good. Everything He influences, He influences it for good. I mean, I, it is a, that is a revelation. The goodness of God, I am so grateful. It is such a big revelation in my life that it has just blessed me so much. You know, every, probably every Sunday, my husband will get up in the, in the pulpit and he'll say, well, you know, say this together with me. For the Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. That's not filler for the service. That is a declaration of our faith. Yes. God, we know that you are good. Yes. Woo, glory to God. For my God is good and his mercy, it endures forever. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. And so it's really important that we understand that. Like I said, I don't even know how some people, you know, even live life not know. I mean, sickness comes and they don't know if it's the devil or they don't know if it's God trying to teach them something. Why would you even pray? Well, I guess I'll pray about it, but, you know, most of the time nothing happens. Well, it's because... You're not even praying with any expectation or you're not even praying with any knowledge as to whether you should stand against it or receive. I mean, you understand what I'm saying? Religion has just missed and there's so many cobwebs. But when you get it figured out who the good one is, who the evil one is, 
and how to define, okay, this is stealing, killing, and destroying. It's not from God. It's from the devil. Therefore, I resist it steadfast in the faith. Hallelujah. All right. Praise the Lord. Now, let's get into some good things. Last week, we talked about how the enemy works. How the enemy works. And we, and we brought out specifically how the enemy, what he does is he attacks our soul. We are, we are spirit, soul, and body. Okay? We're spirit, soul, and body. We talked about this last week. When we got born again, our spirits were recreated, made new. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creature. All things are what? Passed away. Behold, all things are made new. Everything's new. The moment you got saved, the moment you called on the name of Jesus. Woo! Praise the Lord. You got a brand new spirit, got a brand new nature, got a brand new heart. And something else happened to your spirit. Your spirit was sealed by the Holy Ghost. Hmm. Sealed by the Holy Spirit. But there's a little bit more to you than just your spirit, man. You are a spirit. You've got a body and you got what? A soul. So two-thirds of you <laughs> were not made new at the new birth and was not sealed at the new birth. In fact, we know this about our soul that it's constantly in this process of being renewed. It's constantly in this process of being transformed. He said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. Because we want to exchange our thoughts for God's thoughts. We want to exchange the way we've always viewed life, which has been wrong, for God's view of life. Amen. We want to exchange uh, our ways and our choices and our bad decisions and all that. We want to exchange that for God's. That's transformation. So the enemy, when he comes against us, one of the main things he targets is your soul. Your mind, and your soul's a big thing. Mind, will, emotions, your personality is involved in your soul, which is kind of interesting. Part of your soul will live forever. It's interesting. It's inter you're going to have to put up with me in heaven and my big laugh. <laughs> And my big hugs yes. that just about squeeze you in half and I hold on too long. That, 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 is, that is a part of my personality since I was a kid. Same thing with you. There's part of your soul that's always going to be. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Woo! Glory to God. This is just the, the, the way God designed it is just perfect and amazing. So, anyway, you've got your soul that the enemy really tries to target in your life. And we know this about your soul. Third John tells us this, I wish above all things, this is what God's saying, or I pray above all things, that thou mayest prosper, be in health, even as your soul prospers, or another way to say, as your soul succeeds and flourishes as your soul, mind, will, emotion, personality, thinking faculties, all of that, as that flourishes in God, it affects other areas of your life. Other areas of your life prosper too, flourish too. But that's the big target on you, is your soul. 
And so the enemy has different ways that he attacks your soul. And so we talked about that last Wednesday night. How many of y'all were here? We looked over in 2 Corinthians 4, 4. We see one of the things that the enemy does is he tries to blind people's minds. That's a part of your, your mind is a part of your soul. He likes to blind people's minds. It says in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, in whom the God of this world, that's who, talking about the devil, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And so there's different ways that the devil likes to get people entangled in stuff and the effect of that is it causes a blindness in people's minds to where they don't see what they need to see. We talked about some of these things. Fear. You get entangled with fear, it blinds minds. He even said that over in Timothy, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of what? Love, power, and a sound mind. Why is that in that verse? Because fear affects the mind. It's an effect of fear. You have cause and effect. Uh, we, we talked about this, that deception. You know, deception and fear, both of those are, are if, you, if you read all of the scriptures that talk about the end times, there's markings of the end times. Fear is one of them, and deception is another one. We are there. You better believe it. I have, I have seen people become deceived, and they're not seeing things right. You know, that, if, you, if you study that word deceived, one of the words that keeps coming up is the word apostasy. Which is what? When people leave the faith. I mean, I've seen people that, I mean, just like overnight become like a different person and believe a totally different doctrine. <laughs> they, they, I mean, it's just unbelievable. You think, how could somebody get there? Their minds are blinded. You know, even, even and, I, and I don't want to get too, too far in this because there's too much I need to get into, but you, know, you think about even Judas. I was, I was, I've been thinking about Judas, the, the one who betrayed Jesus. It, it says this about him, that it would have been better for him if he wasn't even born. <laughs> that is just crazy. What he did was so grievous and God hated it so much that he betrayed his covenant. Jesus was in covenant with him. He, he betrayed that covenant relationship and betrayed Jesus. And the Bible says it would have been better if he hadn't even been born. But we know this, greed drove him, right? And there came a point where even Satan himself entered into him but if you read about him, he realized what he had done later and had remorse for it and couldn't even live with himself. There came a point where he saw. Can that happen to Christians? It sure can. That's why we need to walk with humility. That's why we need to walk close to the Word of God and be sticklers for judging everything, doctrine, lifestyle, behavior, thoughts. Judge it all by the Word of God. It's good. Or we are open <laughs> targets to being deceived and turning into somebody that nobody knows anymore. Because our minds are, what? Blinded. I hope you're getting something out of it. This is like a warning. 
We can be blinded in our minds with evil. We can be blinded in our minds with our own feelings, lying thoughts from the devil, or even sin. We saw that with the prodigal son. Sin has a blinding effect. But that process, I mean, I don't, th I don't even know if anybody was praying for the prodigal, but we don't see that. But just that process of sin, people wake up. Hallelujah. And he came to himself. Blindness of mind is a work of the devil, and it's how he atta attacks the soul. Now, are you over here in Mark chapter 4? Praise the Lord. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> I know it's not edifying to talk about the devil, but I'm going to tell you something. There's some good things in here that we need to be aware of. We need to be aware and be able to discern what's going on, be able to recognize that is an attack from the devil. Amen. All right. Mark 4 and look at four, uh, uh, verse 14. We're going to see in this passage here some different ways that the enemy brings attacks against the soul. Now look at here in verse 14. It says this, The sower soweth the word. So we've, we've preached out of this many times. This passage is about the word of God coming into your life, being sown into your heart. Do you know, you're, and you're going to see it here, this is one of the reasons the enemy attacks your soul. Why? Because he's out to steal that word. He's out to steal that word before it even has a chance. Before it even has a chance to become fruitful in your life. You know, the, he is so scared of the Word. The Word is life. It is light. It is the dunamis power of God. He does not want that Word producing in you. He's so terrified of it. So he does something. He comes immediately with attacks against your soul to grab that seed so that it's not fruitful in your life. Amen. You know, that's why, you know, if, you, know you, always, you always hear messages about being good ground. Well, I don't know that I've ever heard this, but if you want to be good ground, you need to stand against the attacks of the enemy. You need to put the devil on the run or he'll be able to steal the word in your life. Okay, now let's look at verse uh, 14. The sower soweth the word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown, that when they have heard, look at this, Satan does what? He comes immediately and taketh away the word which was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are, son, or are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. They're happy about it. But verse 17 says, and they have no root in themselves. And I don't have time to preach on that, but maybe another time. And it says they endure, but for a time, but afterwards, when affliction, say affliction. affliction, affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And that word offended there means to be trapped, to trip up, to stumble, or to be enticed to sin. The devil does a lot what he does to get you to this point to beat you down in your soul and then blame God while he's doing it. You know what I'm saying? To beat you down in your soul to where you get to a place where you're weak, trapped, stumbling, tripped up, and enticed to sin. 
But when the, the, the first thing that we see here that he brings is he brings affliction against your life. That word affliction means this. Are we doing okay tonight? Are we following? Affliction means trouble. It means pressure. And it means tribulation. So the devil brings trouble against your soul, pressures against your soul. Now we talked about how he does this mainly because he doesn't want the Word taking root in your life. But whether you're under the Word, whether you're saved, not saved, he's doing this to everybody. But it makes a really big difference when you're under the Word. It makes a really big difference if you're under the Word of God when trouble comes, when pressure comes, when uh, uh, tribulation comes against your life. Now, Paul talked about this. Paul said this. He, he actually had some good news about it. You know, one of the things I love about the Apostle Paul, I, I just I appreciate this about him so much. He was a man who walked in the spirit of faith. He was a man who understood victory in Christ Jesus, understood the in him, in Christ realities, but he was not ever one to pull back about being very transparent about the attacks that were coming against his life. And I appreciate that about him. Because I'm telling you, sometimes, you know, when you get in the Word, and I mean, I don't know, it's so funny, you know, I was raised Pentecostal, we expected trouble. You know, like we talked about trouble all the time, talked about what the devil was doing. We practically glorified the devil. You know what I'm saying? So we expected trouble, even when we didn't have it. But then, you know, you get under the Word and you get under what we call Word of Faith and you understand, you know, that you have victory in Christ Jesus, that you're redeemed from the curse of the law. You understand that, you know, that you've been given authority over the devil. But sometimes in the midst of learning all that, you kind of sometimes get the idea that maybe you shouldn't have any trouble. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know why I'm under attack. Then you're mad at the preacher and you're mad at God and you know, you're about half ticked at everybody because you think, well, why am I having all these attacks? Well, it's normal yeah. to be attacked. We don't glorify it. We glorify the fact that Jesus has overcome for us. Amen. <laughs> Made us more than a conqueror. Causes us always to triumph. Do you understand what I mean? We can't get out of one ditch and get in the other one. But if you read the Apostle Paul's writings, he's always being very transparent about what's happening, but yet he always goes over to understanding who he is in Christ. Hallelujah. He always gives God the praise for the victory. Amen. So we see some things here. Uh, 2 Timothy, let me just read. The, just stay there in Mark, and I'm just going to be bouncing all over the place. Can I do that? He said this about affliction. 2 Timothy 3.11, he said, Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured. <laughs> so he had to walk through some stuff. He said, But out of them all... <laughs> I love that. How much, how much is all? I mean, it's not half of them. It's not most of them. He said, all these persecutions and afflictions came at me, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Hallelujah. Afflictions will come. In fact, the Bible says many well, I just don't like that. Well, it's just a fact. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. You just have to respond correctly. When you respond 
according to the Word of God, you know what happens? The delivering power of the Lord Jesus Christ begins to work on your behalf and delivers you out of every single one of them. Come on. I love that about Paul. Yes, this is coming against me, but my God delivers me out of them all. Hallelujah. You get anything out of this? So affliction is one of the things that the devil brings against your life, and he brings it against your soul. I'm telling you, trouble comes to wear you down mentally. Pressure comes to beat you down in your soul. But you don't have to take it. You can resist it. Amen. And get the devil off your case. Mark 4, 17. Let's keep reading. It says, um, And have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time afterwards when affliction or, look at this word, persecution. Say persecution. That word persecution means to be pursued or to be followed after. The devil brings affliction. The devil brings persecution. Have you ever felt like oh, circumstances are just pursuing you? Running after you? Have you, ever, have, have you ever looked at uh, maybe even times in your life? And I'm telling you, this is a real thing. When the, the devil will stir up people. Thank God it's not most people. You know what I mean? Like, I'm telling you, most everybody that I come across is wonderful. But you just need that one. <laughs> that's allowing, I'm talking about Christians even, they allow the devil to use them. They get all stirred up. I'm going to expose you. Well, go ahead. There's nothing to find. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to come after this church. I'm going to take down this. I mean, whatever. The devil will stir up people the devil will stir up situations to go after you, to pursue you, and that is persecution. And we see it, it's a marking of the end time, the last days, where the church and Christians will be what? Persecuted. If you, if you read even the, the book of Acts with the, with the church, there was a time when it talks about, I think it's Acts 8-ish, somewhere in there, where the church was even scattered. Scattered abroad all over the place. Why? Because they were being persecuted. The religious people weren't just mad at them, they were going after them. I mean, Stephen was stoned. Many of the disciples ended up being killed. Paul was stoned. Church got around him and raised him up from the dead. But what was it? That was persecution. Let me just read. Um, you get anything out of this? So good. Acts 13.50. It says, But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city. I think that's interesting that it says that the Jews stirred it up. It actually goes beyond that. Because the Bible says that we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, but what? Against powers, principalities, the rulers of darkness. See, it's, 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 it's that realm that stirs up people, even people that don't even know you. You ever people that just don't even know you and they are so incensed with hatred and dislike for you. And they don't even know why. What is it? It's demons. It's the work of devils. 
Why? Because the devil wants to come against your soul. He wants those kinds of attacks to affect your soul, to make you tired in your soul, to wear you out in your soul, to take you, you know, take all your focus and you're not even thinking on God, you're not even thinking on the Word. All your focus is on this attack. All your focus is on these people coming after you. These circumstances coming after you. I hope I'm helping somebody in here. I've got to hurry. <laughs> but the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. It actually forced them to leave where they were. Well, the devil was just trying to hinder the gospel. I believe that. But I also believe that this attack was against their soul. I'm, I know, I'm telling you, I know, I know ministers, good ones. Good ones. Had an anointing, had a fire, had a message from God. And they left the ministry because of this stuff. Because of betrayal. Come on. People accusing them of things that, you know, they didn't do. And there's a, I don't need this. I can't take this anymore. Just saying. That's what the devil was trying to do here. But I love Paul's response to persecution in Romans 8. Can I read it to you? Romans 8, 35. <laughs> I mean, he just had such a spirit of faith. He said, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution, people coming after me, People getting stirred up and trying to scatter me all over the place. He said, or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. I love verse 37. But nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. He's saying over persecution, I'm more than a conqueror. And then he goes on to say this in verse 38. He says, for I am persuaded. Where, where, where does that persuasion have to be? Not just in your heart. We're talking about the soul. You have to be persuaded in your soul. Why? Your soul is where you choose to quit or not quit. You know when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane? Remember when he was in the Garden? You know, he was, he was, you know, he was so, uh, oh, like, not my will. That's not his heart. Come on now. What is your soul? Mind, will, your will, and your emotions. <laughs> Jesus was in the garden getting victory over his soul. Yes. Amen. That wanted probably to quit. He said, if there be any other way to do this. Why? Because his soul was pulling away from the will of God here. He's like, there's this, if there's any other way to do this, let's do it. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Jesus was in the garden getting his soul persuaded to go to Calvary. And if he hadn't have dealt with his soul in Gethsemane, get mad at me if you want to, I don't, I don't know that he would have made it to Calvary. He's our example. 
hallelujah, of how to get victory in your soul, how to get your soul fully <laughs> persuaded. Paul said this, he said, but I'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, principalities, powers, nor things present, things to come, height, depth, any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. He had to make a decision about his victory, not just in his heart, but in his soul. He had to make a decision, I'm not going to quit. I'm more than a conqueror. I have victory over persecution, being <laughs> pursued by demonic people. Hallelujah. All right. Let's go back to Mark 4. I'm gonna, I've got to finish this out. So we've got affliction. We've got persecution. Let's look at verse 18. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world. Boy, that's a big one. The devil tries to attack your soul Stay with me tonight with the cares of the world. That, that, that right there is defined this way, concern, anxiety. Listen to this one. We've talked about this before. But uneasiness of the mind accompanied by fear of evil. You're uneasy in your mind because you're fearing what evil things might come to you. Boy, that's demonic. That's demonic. That, you know what that is? That is your mind being so filled with anxiety that it's fear tormenting you. That's fear tormenting your soul. What do we do with fear? What do we do with fear? We cast it out. We tell it it has to leave. And then we go even beyond that. We put our trust in God. Whatever it is that the devil is trying to get you to be concerned about, carry anxiety about, have uncertainty about, you need to get built up strong, trusting in God in that area. You know, Paul said something, and, I, and, I, and I'm just going to make reference to it. 2 Corinthians 11, 27, Paul said this. He said, he's talking about things he's dealt with in his life. Here again, that transparency. He said, weariness, painfulness, um, hunger and thirst. He said, fastings, cold and nakedness. Now, verse 28, he says, besides all those other things... That which cometh upon me daily, the care, the care of all of the churches. He says, every day I'm faced with this care that tries to come on me about all the churches. He started all these churches everywhere. And you got some of them doing really good. <laughs> you got some of them that are getting led astray. You got some of them that the Judaizers are coming in there and they're getting mixture between, you know, the, 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 the Jewish traditions and they're trying to mix that with, you know, with redemption. And he's got all these things going on. There's all these things he could worry about, think about, have anxiety about. It's the same with us. What is it? That's the devil attacking your soul. You got to cast that stuff down. And you've got to pick up your faith in God and say, Lord, I trust you over this. I trust you over that. I'm telling you, the devil knows what you are weak in. He knows your buttons. And what area of your life pulls you into fear? You gotta build it up. You gotta build that area of your life up strong in the Word of God. Can I keep going? Because I'm running out of time. Verse 19, the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of what? 
of riches. That word there is defined as deceitfulness of riches is defined as delusions. What's the delusion? The delusion that money is everything. That money is more important than God. More important than your family. That it's going to give you all the happiness, all the peace, all the satisfaction. Every, I'm telling you, it's, 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 that, it's, a, it's a deceit. It's a lie from the devil. And you see a lot of our young people, this younger generation, it just seems like all they want to do is go after money and not go after God. And it's an attack against your soul. Because that's not Bible. Money's not everything. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. What things? All the things you need to live. Yes. All the things that you need in life. <clears throat> Telling you the devil is working hard in this area to get people going that direction. It's an attack against their soul. You know, the Bible says don't trust in uncertain riches. But what? Trust in the living God. Amen. He said this. You still with me? Yes. Cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things. That's just wrong desires. That's just a longing for wrong things. You know, you can have priorities in your life that don't line up with the Word of God. You know what I mean? You can desire things that don't even line up with the Scriptures. Or, other side of that coin, you can desire things that are right, but not for the right reasons. What is that? The devil will feed that, feed that, feed that. Why? Because it affects your soul. I hope you're help, getting help tonight. Recognize this stuff. Because look at what happens. When these things enter in. See, they don't have to enter in. They don't have to enter in. You can discern things by the Holy Spirit and by the Word of God and say, I know exactly what that is. I know exactly what this pressure is all about, devil. You can take it. You can take all your stuff and you can get out of here right now. I'm not allowing pressure. Amen. Your pressure, your trouble, your persecution, your cares. I'm not going to be deceived. I'm not getting my priorities out of line. Oh, no, 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 no. You're not bringing me down like that, devil. I resist you. I command that you leave in the name of Jesus. I'm putting my mind on the Word. I'm, I'm walking in dominion in my being. And I'm keeping my mind stayed on God. I'm keeping my mind stayed on the Word. See, all these things, the devil wants to come in, choke out the Word. That's what it says there. Make it unfruitful. But God has given us weapons and tools to use to protect ourselves against all these kinds of attacks. Amen. And that's where we're going to pick up next time because i got to quit tonight. But if you look there in verse 20, it says, And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirty, sixty, and some a hundred. So there's this flourishing that begins to happen in your soul and in your life when your your heart and your mind are stayed on the Word, you're receiving the Word, you're hearing the Word, and that's what we're going to pick up next time because that is one of your weapons, is to walk in dominion concerning your mind and to keep your mind stayed on the Lord. The devil can't pull your soul into darkness when your mind is stayed on 
on the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why it's important to come to church. That's why it's important to read your word. That's why it's important to speak the word. That's all a part of keeping your mind stayed on God. Amen. Amen. Did you get anything out of that tonight? I feel like we're just having to kind of, kind of drop it. But, you know, we, we, we need these kinds of teachings. We really do. Can't you see where the enemy is working this way? Even in, you know, maybe people around you. You just see that, man, that's just the devil coming against their life, coming against their soul. God wants your soul to prosper. Hallelujah. God wants your soul to succeed. God wants His Word to flourish in your life. And praise God, we have authority and victory over the evil one. I love what Paul said. He said, in all these things, all these different ways the devil tries to come at us, I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus, my Lord. You are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ, your Lord. Walk in that victory. Amen. Take that victory. Put the devil on the run. Well, I just don't know how to do that. You do it with the name of Jesus. You do that with the Word of God. Amen. You stand in your faith. Say, devil, you're not coming back here. You're not coming back here. I'm not going to give you a place. You're not taking advantage of me no more. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's just lift our hearts and let's thank God. Father, we, we just praise you. We thank you. Oh, we're so thankful that there's victory for us even in our soul. Our soul. Hallelujah. There's protection against the evil one. Thank you for revealing to us all of the good things that we've been given in Christ Jesus the authority, the power of the Spirit, the powerful Word of God, all these have been given to us so that we can use them against the enemy when he comes. Lord, we thank you that we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to walk in defeat. We don't have to walk in pressure. We don't have to walk in fear. We don't have to have our minds blinded by the enemy. But Father, we thank you that we can come up on over all attacks, all affliction, and believe you, trust in you. Speak your name. Speak your word. And your power delivers us out of all attack. Hallelujah. We have victory at every turn. We have victory every day. And we give you praise and glory for it in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 If you're here tonight or if you're watching and you've not made Jesus the Lord of your life, do not wait another day. Jesus is coming back. He's coming back very soon. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I receive Jesus into my heart. I receive Him as Lord of my life, Savior and King. I thank You that His blood washes me clean, washes away all unrighteousness, washes away all my past, and by His blood I'm made clean. By the blood of Jesus, I'm made white as snow. No past, no guilt, and no shame. I'm forgiven in Christ Jesus. I believe that I'm saved. Thank you, Lord, that I'm saved. Thank you for coming in and being my God. I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, write me, write us. Let us know so that we can reach out to you and pray for you. Send materials that will bless your life. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, did you get something out of that tonight? Amen. Amen. Why don't we receive tonight's offering? Our ushers are in the aisle with offering envelopes. You can give by text, 84321. Uh, you can give by check, making it payable to Faith World Church. 
Uh, just a few announcements for you. We have um, Christian Foundations class that's going to be this Sunday at 9 a.m. We have our Serve Team Sunday. If you're not involved in Ministry of Helps and this is your church, sign up to be a part of a ministry department team. Amen. We don't have membership here. I know people say, well, you know, I, I need to be a member. Hey, if you feel like this is your church, if you feel like this is where God has called you, get involved. Amen. This is, that's how we look at it. This is your church. Get involved. Amen. And be a part of serving in the kingdom of God. Uh, every Wednesday night, we have youth Bible study at 7 p.m. We have men's conference, women's conference. Sign up for that. This Sunday night, we have a Holy Ghost service. Glory to God at 6 p.m. And then this Saturday, we have an outreach. Praise the Lord. We're going to be reaching the neighborhood of Elder Park this Friday at 1 a.m., 1, 1 p.m., 1 in the afternoon, we're going to be bagging groceries at the Hemet building. So um, the information in the bulletin is wrong about that. So instead of Thursday, Friday, we're going to be bagging groceries at 1 p.m. And then um, this is just something for future. July 5th, there will be no in-person Wednesday night service. So that's the day after the 4th of July. So no in-person service. Tune in on that Thursday for a service that we will pre-record. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. Praise the Lord. Shake hands with 5,000 people. Testify to them. God is a good God. Amen. And we'll see you Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We love you. God bless you.